Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over another problem involving torque, and this video is called the compound wheel. And why is it a compound wheel? Because it's one wheel that is actually made up of two wheels. We have one wheel is the green wheel right here. This green disc represents one of the two wheels. This green disc has a radius of 0 0.5 meters. The other wheel, which is attached to the first wheel, is represented by this yellow disc. The yellow wheel has a radius of 0 0.35 meters. And you can see that both wheels will rotate about this common axis of rotation. They're attached to each other, so they're going to spin and turn at the same time. There are two forces applied. The first force is applied at the edge of wheel number one. It has a magnitude of 25 newtons, and it is applied in such a way that the vector, the force vector, makes an angle of 55 degrees with the radial vector, this radial line, or the extension of that radial line. So this angle here between the vector, force vector, and the radial line is 55 degrees. The other force is applied at the edge of the second wheel, and it is applied in such a way that the angle between this force vector and this radial line, or this radial vector, is 90 degrees. Okay, And we, of course, want to know what is the sum of the torques acting on this wheel, and which wheel, which wheel, in which direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, will this wheel rotate when both forces are applied to the wheel at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the torque produced by force 1, the torque produced by force 2, and we'll add them up and see what we get. Now, we are going to use the torque equation. This is the Greek letter tau. This is the symbol for torque. Torque is calculated as r times f times the sine of theta. So in order to calculate the, force produ the torque produced by each force, we have to identify r, f, and theta. What is r? r is simply the straight line distance from the axis of rotation. This black dot right here is the axis of rotation. It's the straight line distance from the axis of rotation to the point of application of the force. We've been given each of those because they each are applied at the edge of the wheel. The force is simply the force, 25 newtons and 40 newtons. Theta, what is theta for torque? Theta is the angle between the radial vector, between the radial line, or its extension, and the force. So for F1, it's simply 55 degrees. For force number two, you'll notice the angle between the radial vector, the radial line, or the extension thereof, and the force is 90 degrees. So now we know R, F, and theta for both forces, and now we can calculate the torque produced by each force. For torque number one, we're simply going to multiply R times F times the sine of 55 degrees. That's theta for force number one. If you do that, you get that that force produces 10.23 meter newtons of torque. Torque is a vector quantity. It has a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude is 10.23. You'll notice I put a negative sign here. That is because this force, if it was acting on its own, would cause this wheel to rotate in the clockwise direction. Forces, by definition, that cause objects to rotate in the excuse me, in the clockwise direction, produce what we have defined as negative torque. Torque is a vector quantity. This is the magnitude. This is the direction of the torque vector. The torque vector is always perpendicular to the radial, the plane created by the radial vector and the force vector. So that's basically the plane of your computer screen, or if you're working on a piece of paper, the plane of the piece of paper. And using the right-hand rule, you get that your thumb would be pointing into the page and therefore, the direction of the force vector is into the page. Point your fingers along the radial vector, bend them, turn your hands so they can bend your fingers towards the force, and you get that your thumb points into the page. All right? So this is the torque produced by force number one. For torque produced by force number two, we basically do the same thing, RF sine theta. You get that force number two produces plus 10 point excuse me, 10, produces 14 meter newtons of torque. And in this case, if this force was acting by itself, this force would cause the wheel to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. Forces that cause objects to rotate in the counterclockwise direction produce what we have defined as positive torque. So positive and negative basically tells you the direction of rotation. Now, because this object would rotate in the counterclockwise direction, based on this force, then the direction of the torque vector for force number two, or the torque produced by force number two, would be out of the page. 
Okay, now you can see we have calculated the torque produced by each of the forces. Now, I just want to point out quickly, you'll notice that we multiplied the force times the sine of the angle, the force times the sine of the angle. The reason we multiplied the force times the sine of the angle, when you do that, you get the component of the force that is perpendicular to the wheel. And it's only the component of the force that's perpendicular to the wheel or perpendicular to the lever arm that produces torque. So that's why we multiply the force times the sine of the angle to get the component of the force that's perpendicular to the lever arm. Now we want to know the total torque, the sum of the torque. We just add these two torques together, minus 10.23 meter newton plus 14 meter newton. And you get that the sum of the torques produced by those two individual torques is plus 3.77. Again, this is the magnitude. The positive tells you that this wheel would rotate in the counterclockwise direction. And therefore, once again, the direction of the torque vector is out of the page. All right, so there you have it. I think that was pretty straightforward. You basically had to look at the diagram, use the torque equation, identify R, F, and theta for each force, calculate the individual torques, sum them together to get the net torque and the direction of rotation produced by those two individual forces. All right, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, you can do one or all of the following three things. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a nice thumbs up for this video. And also write me out a nice equa uh, equation, <laughs> a nice comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.